Case International Axial Flow Combine Automatic Header Height Control. Precise cutting height that adjusts instantly for contour variations in terrain. Proper operation of the automatic header height control can be affected by its mechanical, electrical, and hydraulic systems. This program will deal with the mechanical portion only. Prior to our discussion of the mechanical troubleshooting procedures, we will examine the basic automatic header control operation. The Case International Automatic Header Height Control System senses varying ground contours across the width of the cutter bar and contours that change to the front and rear as the combine moves forward. On the 820 flexible cutter bar, sensing is accomplished by the cutter bar. More specifically, at practically any point along the cutter bar, there are components that move or pivot against terrain variations up to a range of six inches top to bottom. These movable components include the cutter knife, divider points, skid pads, runners, or linkage. These moving or pivoting components create tension on system sensing rods. The rods rotate a hollow control pipe that spans the width of the header. When this pipe rotates, it, in turn, rotates a potentiometer attached to the pipe on the left-hand side. The potentiometer sends a signal to a system control box mounted under the combine control console. When the control box senses a change in signal due to variations in ground contour, it triggers a solenoid switch, thereby activating the hydraulic lift valve. The valve directs fluid to and from the lift cylinders to raise or lower the header as necessary. In the cab, the operator chooses between automatic header height control or manual control with a switch located on the right-hand console. A height control knob permits selection of the desired cutting height. By rotating this control, the cutting height is increased or decreased. An additional control sets system sensitivity. And the header raise and lower switch permits easy lift and lowering in various situations, including turning at the end of a field. If you are experiencing an automatic header control problem, for example, sluggish operation or bulldozing, you should determine whether you have a mechanical or electrohydraulic problem. First, unplug the potentiometer on the header and connect the potentiometer you know is good. Then, with the engine running at high idle and with the auto header switch on auto, rotate the potentiometer by hand. For safety purposes, stand clear of the header as you perform this test. If the head moves up and down as you rotate the potentiometer, you have identified the problem as mechanical or the original potentiometer on the machine may be faulty. The following sequence of steps will help to correct the situation. Shut the engine off and place the safety stand on the header lift cylinder. With the 820 flexible cutter bar, it's advisable to work from the front of the header to the rear. Reversing this process may leave undetected problems or, more likely, incorrect adjustments. Our first step, then, is to make sure the cutter bar is level. Remove the upper and lower lockout pins across the width of the header. They are located above and below the linkage pivot points at the rear of the header. Next, tie a piece of twine across the cutter guards. Pull it tight and secure it at each end of the header. If the cutter bar is not level with the twine, make the necessary adjustment as follows. Adjust the stop bolts for the left hand and right hand end runners until the height indicators on each header end sheet are both at the bottom of the lowest round hole. With the left hand and right hand end runners adjusted, you then move inward toward the center. Working this way provides a reference for the leveling. It's helpful to have someone lift up on the divider point to remove the pressure from the leveling bolts. Loosen each runner's lock nut and adjust the corresponding leveling bolt if necessary using the twine for a guide. With the cutter bar level, carefully lift portions of the header and push the individual runners on their pins to make sure they each pivot 
and return to their lowest position after releasing. Remember, if the pins do not pivot freely, the automatic header will not sense contour variations correctly. The same holds true for the skids or shoes. As with the runners, push up on the front of each skid. The skids should feel somewhat loose and be free to pivot. If dirt is packed in, the skid will not track the ground contours correctly and this ultimately affects the header height operation. If dirt is packed in, loosen the top sheet nuts and turn each notch clamp sideways across the width of the header. Pull up the top sheet metal and clean out the skid area. We are now ready to adjust the sensing rods. Loosen both nuts on each sensing rod with the exception of the extreme right hand rod. This rod will maintain return spring tension. The spring's length should measure 4.5 inches. If it isn't 4.5 inches, adjust the extreme right hand rod to provide this dimension. Also, check to see that the control pipe is rotating freely. To remove slack in the sensing rods, adjust all remaining sensing rods and working to the left, tighten the upper nuts, then tighten the lower nuts. Working from right to left will remove all slack in the joints of the control pipe. Recheck the return spring length to assure 4.5 inches. After adjusting the sensing rods, check the length of the counterbalancing springs. Initial settings and recommended lengths for normal field conditions are provided in your 820 operator's manual. In adverse conditions, such as soft soil, the springs may have to be tightened to reduce ground pressure on the skid shoes to prevent pushing or bulldozing. If the cutter bar is sticking up or riding on top of the stubble, loosen the springs. Since the springs act as a counterbalance, tightening them removes weight from the cutter bar. Loosening them puts more weight on the cutter bar. The key to adjustment of the counterbalancing springs is to push up against the springs on a skid, runner, or if they have been installed, one of the two optional divider tips. In doing this, you can determine if the weight is even, spring to spring, or too heavy for softer soil. After adjustment of the counterbalancing springs is complete, our next step is to fine tune the potentiometer. With the combine engine running at high idle, and after the hydraulic oil has been warmed up, raise the header with a header raise and lower switch on the right hand console in the cab, and move the automatic header switch to the auto position. The header should remain stationary. Next, position the header height control knob to its minimum setting and the sensitivity control to its maximum. Momentarily depress the header lower switch. The header should lower and continue lowering to the ground after the switch has been released. If the header does not lower, or if it does not lower completely, loosen the locking nut on the header potentiometer and rotate it until the lowering has been completed. Then lock the potentiometer in position. In the cab, slowly rotate the header height control knob clockwise until the header raises, but leave the skid pads in contact with the ground. If the header begins to raise and lower repeatedly, slowly rotate the sensitivity control knob toward minimum until this cycling stops. The final step in the 820 mechanical troubleshooting process is to set the cutting height. From the cab, it is impossible to see the bottom of the header and the relative position of the skids to the ground, so setting accurate cutting height is essential. Cutting height indicators visible from the cab have been provided for this purpose. To set accurate cutting height, let the header all the way down until it bottoms out, and then bring it back up slightly. The skid pads have to be on the ground to work properly. At high idle, slowly turn the header height control knob until the head raises to completely uncover the bottom edge of the upper oval on the end sheet. In this position, the A20 header will perform at its best. At any time a greater or lesser height is needed, turn the header height knob. This concludes our automatic header height control mechanical service procedures. Performing the proper mechanical adjustments, as outlined in this program, will ensure maximum machine productivity and customer satisfaction.